Hello everyone and welcome to my SharePoint Site Users Crash Course for the Office 365 online versions of SharePoint. This course is for those who have a SharePoint site already created and you now need to start using it. If you need to use it for document management, then this course is for you. My name is Robin Solonenko and I've been teaching Microsoft products over 25 years to over 27,000 students in my hands-on instructor-led training. With the release of all my Udemy courses on this platform, all my students will get a PDF manual of the actual manual that I use to teach in my classrooms and the virtual courses I provide. These manuals remove useless product information and give you what you need to know with step-by-step -step instructions. In regards to SharePoint, you're also getting modern and classic screenshots. I update them yearly because as you know, Microsoft changes their products quite often, so you're always getting a PDF that is current. I also recommend you, view all, you review all topics in this section, starting with the next topic of support notes, how to contact me, and the important one of site setup before you start this course. Thank you again for signing up for this course, and we'll see you on the other side. Hello everyone, and welcome to this topic where I'd like to set some expectations so you know what to expect from me and from yourself. It's very important we understand this so there's no confusion going forward. This is a crash course, which means it's under two hours. Uh, nothing gets developed here. Everything has to be developed before you start this course. We're just here to teach you how to use what's been developed. So here's a couple things to take, uh, keep in mind. This course is intended for the student who needs to use a corporate SharePoint site that has been designed by your site administrator or IT department. Your job is to upload documents, maintain them, share them, manage them, you also may need to create a calendar, some announcements or other list items. You must have access to a SharePoint site uh, or Office 365 version in order to follow along in this course. Also, if my SharePoint video does not match your SharePoint environment screen, remember Microsoft can update the cloud-based products whenever they choose. And for the most part, the updates are minor but, and behind the scenes, but on occasion they do uh, make some physical changes like buttons and so forth. Not to mention, if you are working in your completed corporate site, it will look different than mine, but the same components will be there. Your quick launch, the gear, the apps themselves, they just may be uh, different colors and so forth, okay? Also, in respect of the video uh, and the speed of my instruction, remember my videos are taught without interruption, so I may not repeat a process as much as I would if I was teaching a class. So feel free to pause the video, replay it, and do it in the SharePoint environment. These videos are intended to learn at your own pace, not at the pace the video was recorded. Since this is a crash course under two hours, there are no exercises in this, but there are quizzes at the end of each section. So you can kind of redo what we, or learn what we've taught you. You are provided with an official PDF manual for this course that I do use in my class. Uh, so all their topics are covered, and there's a couple more as well. I do recommend you read Chapter 1, as I don't go over that in this course. It's just an overview of what SharePoint is and some definitions. Again, this course was intended to show you the highlights of SharePoint from a site user perspective and get you comfortable with all what you need to know to start using your SharePoint site. All right, that's all I have to say for that. We'll see you in the next topic. Hello everyone and welcome to this last topic in this section about your site setup. Just a reminder, this is a SharePoint site user course, which means your site has to have been set up already by the site owner or site administrator before you can proceed. Now, if you do wish to just sit back and watch this two hour crash course, you're welcome to. But if you are going to work with me, then there's some things that have to be set up in order for you to uh, keep along with me. So a couple things that you need to have. So first off, you do need to have a SharePoint site, a collection site, or a subsite. It's also sometimes we call a sandbox, meaning it's a place where you can play and not ruin anything. Also within that site or subsite that you have, you should have the following web apps created. A document library, a calendar, uh, which is a list, announcements, a links, and a custom list along with issue tracking, as, of the, as those are the ones I'm gonna be focusing in on. And in each document library, the calendar announcements, links, customs, you should have some custom fields, like a department, which is a choice, status could be a choice, 
a yes, no type field. It doesn't matter if they're exactly identical to those, but I need you to have two or three fields, uh, preferably choices and some yes, no's in there and in all of those that you see there, except with the exception of issue tracking. So if you have this site already, good, you're ready to go. If not, and you want to follow along, please get somebody to make this for you. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just get the site and the apps created so you can work along. I also have some files for you to download along with the PDF, or you can use your own documentation to upload and, and so forth. All right, once that's set up, you're ready to create and start section two. See you on the other side. Hello everyone and welcome to the first topic in this first section and but before we get into document libraries I just want to discuss the layout of SharePoint uh, because we, I'm assuming at this point you have a SharePoint site uh, from your corporation or you've developed one and now you kind of want to get into this so let's talk about some of the layout options so if you take a look at my screen you can see automatically on the left side you have a menu system here this is referred to as the quick launch and then in the middle is your landing page which you'll have a corporate logo some messages that kind of stuff and for everything that you click on on the left it will show up here in the middle so whether it's documents photos some links uh, support tickets uh, whatever it will always show up in the middle side and this is a modern look by the way so if in, in the event you are, you can have a SharePoint online site or a 365 site, but it can be classic view. Uh, and if that's the case, you will have tabs or you'll still have a quick launch on the left, but you'll also have some links here across the top uh, in respect of some potential uh, tabs and so forth. Uh, I, I am teaching in a modern view, but in the manual that is provided with this course, uh, when I do my demos, there are screenshots for both modern and classic. Also in here on the upper right corner of your screen is a gear. And you can get to some of the same features over here. So if you click on that gear in the upper corner, you'll see site contents over there. And that will show you everything that's on the left side. Or it will show you everything that you have access to. So if I click on the you know, site contents, you can see I have pretty much the same things except the ones on the left, far left, may be named a little bit differently uh, than these ones. But either way, you have access to either one of these, don't matter how you get there. And that's through the gear and site content. Don't let this permissions fool you. You don't have, you can see the permissions, but you can't change anything. The other thing you can see in the site contents is the recycle bin over here in the corner. So if you happen to delete stuff and you didn't mean to, you want to get it back, you can go up to the gear and go into your recycle bin and restore it. Uh, you do have about 60 or 90 days. It depends on how the site admin has set it, but you can get your stuff there. You don't need to ask anybody, hey, can you get my stuff back? So that's if you accidentally delete an item or a document library. The other thing that's also in the corner is your profile account, which is attached to your Microsoft 365. If you click on that little, uh, your name up there, or the icon, you can see here, you have a view account or view the My Microsoft 365 profile. If your company allows it, you can click on that and you'll be taken to an overview of your entire account with Microsoft 365. And because you're in SharePoint, you will see you know, uh, some more details and files. I explain this more in the next topic, but that's through that little icon. If I come back over here and I go back to student one and I choose view account, I get this one. It's a little bit different. This is where you can set all your settings for your security, your password and so forth. Again, providing your organization allows it. It depends on who you're working for and how things are set up. Okay, so that's that. And then on top, of course, you have your search, uh, which you will be discussing that for sure at the end of the next section. But this is just an overview of the screen. Um, again, it may look a little bit different in a corporate environment in respect of colors and logos and that kind of stuff, but it's the same concept. Quick launch on the left, potential menu items across the top, and you have a gear in the right corner. All right. That's all we have to say for that first topic. Let's get you into the next one, 
where we actually start discussing what are document libraries. See you on the other side. Hey everyone, and welcome to the SharePoint Site User course, where we're now going to actually start looking at one of the main features of a SharePoint site, and that is document libraries. SharePoint is much more than document libraries. It's a, it's a water cooler for all employees to come visit, check out announcements, calendar events, and so forth. But in this section, we're going to look at document libraries. And the first question is, for most people, what are they? What is that document library? Essentially, it is a central repository for all your files for the organization or for your project or for a team, and it can hold various types of projects. Words, Excels, PDFs, images if you want. If you upload your images, however, they will not display into this library. They will just list them. You actually need a special picture library for photographs. But basically, it is a fancy library. Uh, and a fancy folder. You can create subfolders uh, if you wish, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Libraries also can handle versioning, because as you know, in your current environment, some of you may be saving a document as version A, B, C, or version one, or version two, or versions by dates, okay? That is so 1980. We don't do that anymore. Version is handled by SharePoint with every document library, that your owner creates. You can have both major and minors. So major being one, version two, three, four, minors, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. And the point is, is that whoever uh, owns those has to publish the minors so it becomes a full version. But the point is, with versioning, you do not have to worry about, do I have the latest file? Because when you actually click on it, you are getting it. If you download it, you got the latest version. If you send a link to it, it's the latest version. Okay. There are features in SharePoint for you to go back versions if you need to, but the default behavior is to always show you the latest version. Now, if you have a modern website, the default behavior is 500 copies of all versions, but it can be as low as 100 or as high as 50,000. It's up to the site owner and administrator uh, for how much they want to keep. If it's a classic website or a page or a library, it could be as low as one, and again, as many as they will allow. But keep in mind that versioning uh, keeps uh, duplicating the size. So if you have a one make file, 10 copies, that's one times 10. Okay, so it can use up a lot of space. But again, we will discuss that in the next, on one of these topics coming up. Furthermore, there's also more about these document libraries. You can create subfolders, like I mentioned earlier, within a document library. However, it is suggested you create custom fields as metadata with categories and use views to filter or locate your files. Problem with subfolders is that views ignore them. So if you're trying to look at a view, you will not be able to see the folders and their content. And on top of that, Microsoft does have a limitation on the file size or the length of the uh, URL to 265 characters. So the more files or folders you have with long file names, what will ha eventually happen is that you can't open the file. Okay, so we try to not have as many subfolders or folders that you may be used to. And lastly, even though this course is uh, taught on SharePoint Online 365 versions, your site owner could have made it classic or made some of the apps classic okay now in the manual provided i do give you screenshots for both as we're working but i am completely working in a modern view all right so that is what document libraries are i hope you have a grasp of that now let's actually do some work we'll see you in the next topic where we actually upload and create some documents in your document library see you on the other side Welcome everybody to this topic where we now discuss and work on uploading and creating documents within your SharePoint. So please come into your SharePoint site and hopefully you have a document library. Uh, you can get to it from your gear if you wish, but I have mine set up over here on the left side. So I have one called documents, one called confidential docs. So when you're in your one of your libraries, 
Uh, first thing you'll notice in, in the modern version, you do have the, your little menu bar up here. And this is the menu bar that has a tendency to change as Microsoft makes their various updates. If you're looking at a classic view, you're, you'll have a tab and ribbon system up here. And just remember, in the manual, I do provide both screenshots. Okay, so how do you get files in here? There's a couple of ways, actually. One way, if you want to do it one at a time, is, just, is you simply come up to this Upload, choose Files, navigate to wherever your files are on your C drive, and select it, and click o Open. And you'll see you'll get a pop-up here saying it's opening or loading up, and there's my file that I just uploaded in here. Pretty straightforward. You can also do a drag and drop. So I happen to have three documents sitting on my desktop on the outside of my video view here. I'm just going to pick them up and drag them in. So you can do a simple drag and drop, boom, give them an extra minute. It's uploading three items. These are larger uh, PDF files. And you know this one's taking a little while, but they will come into play. You can see it's still uploading. And there's my documents, okay? That's the second way. Another way is simply if you want to create a document within here. These were existing documents that I brought in. However, you can go up to this new button and choose what one of these from the templates. Now, this option in here will depend on your owner, uh, an administrator, what they let you have access to. But simply, if I choose a Word document, what will happen is I will open up another tab within the browser and give me a watered down version of Word. And I can create my document right here, right now. So I may say, you know, here is my first doc. The other thing to note, because you did it this method, you will notice up here it says document saved because it's done automatically. Now, if you don't want that name document, which most of us don't, I'll click right there and I can rename it here my first doc. Hit enter, it will rename it, and it's saved. If I want to write some more, some more content here, you see as I'm typing, it is saving up here in the upper left corner. Now, because it's in a separate tab, I can close it out here with the X. There's my first doc, and if it's not here, just hit your refresh on your browser but there's my third or my next document. So you can do an upload, you can do a drag and drop, or you can do a new. Then there's one more way. I can now go to Word. So if you want to open up Word or Excel or PowerPoint. So let's see where mine I'll is. I'll say this is we'll my to second document. When oh, you go to save, one, so you do a file, back button save as. That. You should have access to your sites over here on the left, your mm -hmm. SharePoint sites. And then all you need to do is to pick your site here and go through this list. I you know, obviously have quite a bit in here. Now, because I haven't been to that site yet from here, what I typically would do is go to the parent site, which is this Silver Auto Club you see here. I select that and then I can click on Silverado Club up there to take it into this screen. And there is my SharePoint site user course. I can click that and there's my documents. So if I go to documents, there we are. And I'll leave it, this is my second document and save it. Give it a minute and it's pushing it to the library. I might have to refresh this. And there's my second doc. So you see, to get your documents in here, you do have a couple options. Upload one, drag and drop a bunch, or do a new from here, or do a file save as and into your SharePoint from Word, Excel, or PowerPoint. Now, once you have documents in here, if you select them, it doesn't matter which one here, I'll take this one here, you can see how my menu bar changes. I have different options to play with that document. I can open them, I can share it, download it, delete it, rename it. 
uh, move it, copy it. Uh, if you hit the dot, dot, dot over here, I even have more properties and versions, which we'll talk about in the next topic. I can even check it out. Or when I select a file, there's a dot, dot, dot right there. With more actions, I can click it here and look at all the things I can do. Pretty much what you see up above. And I can open it in browser or the app. I can manage the access. I can automate it. A lot of things. So the popular one here is sharing. Okay, so if I click on the share button here, this will pop up and now I can share it with anybody in the organization. So if I want to share it with another student, I have student two here, and you can see this person does have to be within the organization. And I have options here. I can hit this little button or link to say control what they can edit. Maybe they can't edit. Maybe it's view only and expiry date on it. Um, anything I want, I can block the download. Whatever I wish for properties to that document when I send it to student two. And I can click send and boom, it gets an email, gets sent to student two with a link back to this so they can actually see it or use it. Now, don't worry, the permissions have to be set. If that person was not allowed to see this library or this invoice, they won't be able to, okay? But that's how you share things. You don't necessarily need to download an email. You just share it from here, okay? Now, also, you can get properties of that document by clicking on the I over here in the corner. So once it's selected, you can click I and read up all about it. So you can see the name, the title, and the activity, where it's located, and here's your path. So again, if you wanted to, you could hit that copy button and now run over to your Outlook and paste it and email it to whoever you need. That's another way of sharing. Okay, so yeah, once the document's in here, you have a lot of options to do and to play with once your document's active. Now, if you want to just use your document, you simply just have to click on it and it opens it up in Microsoft Word or Excel or any of those products, okay? Now, same thing here. You might notice we are missing some options and that's because you're working within the browser with a watered down version of Word. You can always click on editing over here and say open in desktop app so you can actually open it up in the full version of Word. Otherwise, you simply make your changes, close out the tab, refresh your screen if necessary, and you have your document right there. Okay, so that's it for this topic on how to upload and create documents within a document library. We'll see you in the next topic where we discuss document views. Welcome back everybody to this topic where we now discuss document views. And in order to do document views, you have to have had custom columns, which is beyond the scope of the course, because typically columns are created by your site owner. And what those are, if I go over to my confidential docs section, you'll see I have a couple in here. Now they're not that hard. If you actually have the rights to do it, you can click on this add column over here and you'll, you can you know, you can choose the type of column in that list. Because I'm acting as a student, I don't have them. But if you have full control, you will. But basically, here's some columns. Now, currently, they are empty. So I want to show you what happens when you have existing docs and you create these. Uh, as a user, you do have the ability to click on Edit in Grid View up here. Okay. Uh, if you click on that, it turns it into like an Excel spreadsheet where you can click in here and then fill out the options. So the status in this case is pending or approved or denied. So I'm just gonna randomly pick some in here to fill in these fields, just like that. Uh, health coverage, these are yes or no's. So you can turn some on, leave some off. That's what a yes or no checkbox looks like. A due date, maybe when was something due. Now it can take a while to pull up the calendar. But these, again, these custom fields 
would have been uh, designed for you uh, from the site owner. You wouldn't have to do that. You would just have to fill in these, uh, these, these empty fields, of course. Okay, I'm just picking some random dates here to fill this in quickly. And you can do the same if you have some on yours. Just pick one more there. And one more there. Okay, department, so it could be HR. So you can see these are quite easy. I don't have to type in these at all because they're all choice or drop downs, which makes things a lot quicker and easier. And then when I'm finished, I just click the exit in grid view up here in the upper left and it puts it back to normal view. Now, this is what we want. So you have a bunch of files and you have this standard view and you can see in the upper right corner here all documents. This is the default view for this library called Confidential Docs. And when I say create a view, what I mean by that is maybe you want to narrow down because typically you're going to have a couple hundred documents in here and I don't want to have to scroll. So a view is one way to narrow down or filter what you want to see. So to do that, you're going to come up to this drop down here and you should have create a new view. When I click on that, you'll say, well, what do you want to call it? Well, maybe I'm looking for all those that are approved. So I type in approved here, click create, give it a second. Now there's my approved. Now we didn't actually set the approved yet, but you see it says approved up here. We actually now have to go apply that filter. So you come to this drop down here and we choose edit in current view and you're taken to this screen. All right, so from top to bottom, the screen here, there's your name. You can make this a default view, which I, I uh, stress you be very careful on that one because if it's filtered, uh, the next person may not be aware of that. And in here, this section, you can see all the various columns that are not being seen, but you can turn them on. So you can see there's things like uh, title, version, uh, the who created it, uh, checked in, checked out. So there's a lot more information. And then here on the right side, you have the position from left to right. So for example, I maybe I don't want to see who modified it, but I wouldn't mind seeing who created it. So I'll turn on the created and I wouldn't mind seeing the version because we're going to need that soon anyways. And then the key for the filter is down here in this filter section where it says show the items when column and we wanted the status is equal to approved because remember that's what we're calling this an approved status. So in this section you specify the field, what's the equal to, less than, and then what is it. In this case it's approved and that's it. Click OK, give it a second, and now I'm just looking at the approved. So to see this in action, if I click back on Home, come back into Confidential Docs, boom, there's all the documents. But if I come up to the drop down over here, select Approved, now I only see my approved ones. Much easier and very quick. And if I want to see the old ones, I just go back and see all documents and it puts it back to all. So it's very easy to create a view once you have these brought in. Now you also notice the all documents view has modified, modified by. If I switch it over to approved, it's created by and version. Now there's nothing stopping me from going back to all documents and modifying this current view and I'll do that. I come up here, say edit current view, give it a second. And again, I can turn off the modified, modified by. I'll turn on uh, the created by, the file size, and the version. But maybe I want the created by to be in position three. So created by, I'll come over here and make it position three, and it will adjust. 
and that's all I'm going to change. And I just click OK. And voila, see, now I have a created by. It's in the third spot because that holds a spot. And there's my version, there's my file size. So you can just change the current view, which in this case is all documents. Now, I want to show you another one that can also be helpful, and you can do this on status or health or date or department. Is I'm going to come back up in here. I'm going to create another new view, and I'm going to call this one by department, like that. Click Create. Same thing, come back up into here, choose Edit Current View. But this time, when I scroll down, I need to go to this section here and expand the Group By. So Group By, and you read this carefully, first group by the column, and we said Department. That's all I need to do. See what happens, let's click on OK, and now you get this effect, where you now have these departments that will expand and collapse for you. But don't worry, the same thing is going to happen. If I click on Home, it resets itself. I go back to Confidential Docs, there they are. I come over here and choose either Approved or By Department. One click, and I can see it all. Okay, so that is how you create your views from any library, but you, it is best that you have custom columns in here first with some uh, you know, coverage in there. Now, one more thing to show you, let me put this back to uh, all documents. We showed you how to do this uh, edit and grid view. What happens when you upload a document? Well. If I upload a document, and again, I'll just upload another one of these. When I bring it in, or when it comes in, where is it? Right there it is. If you select your invoice, the check mark over there, and then over here you click on the I button, and you can see these right here. You can see my status. So you can put these on right here, right now. See these? I'm just clicking in here and filling these out. And that's because none of these are mandatory. So if it was mandatory, this pane would pop up. And then that's it. I close it out. And there's my invoice. And all it all has been filled out. Okay? So the edit and grid view is perfect when you've got a whole bunch of documents to do it once. Otherwise, select it, choose your eye, and fill it out as necessary. Okay, but again, typically your fields are already pre-made by your site owner. You just have to fill in the details. All right, that wraps up how to create document views. Let's see you in the next topic where we now discuss document versioning. Welcome back, everybody, to this topic where we discuss document versioning. And this can be one of the more complicated ones to understand, but you'll see it's not too bad once it's explained properly. First off, in your current uh, environment in your office, what a lot of people have a tendency to do is they'll open up a document like this in, in Word, and then when they want a second version, they do File Save As, and they'll call it Document 2, you know, and maybe put a date on it. And then the next time they open it, it's document two with a different date, or 2B, or 2C, whatever. But they keep on saving these multiple copies of, these, of the particular file on a C drive or whatnot. That is versioning, but that's, that is bad because you don't know what the latest version is. And then if you email it out, uh, who's got the latest version? So versioning in SharePoint is taken care of for you. When your owner creates the library, typically versioning is turned on. There's nothing you need to do. Now, to see this in action, I'm going to take one of these documents here, this My First Doc. So when I click on it, and it goes into this Word, which we've seen this before. And then I'll maybe put some notes in here. Here uh, is another paragraph. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's blah, 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 right there it is. 
And remember, it is saving because it's in within the browser, so it saves it automatically. I close it out, and I'm done. It's that easy, and it just created another version. How do I know that? Well, if I click on this, I'm getting what I just did. Here's another paragraph, blah, blah, blah. Well, how do I know versioning's turned on? Other than that view there, when you come into your document library, hover over the dot, 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 version history right there, click it, and you can see all the versions. So you can see this was originally put in here on the 1044, and now I'm on version 6 at 122. You can see here how it's done all these various versions. And take a look, this is those statuses. So every time that record changed, there was an update to the version. Now with this ability, I can come in here and I can view a older version. I can restore it, which makes it, makes it the latest version, or I can delete it. So we do have this right in here. Now this is again, is all turned on automatically. The default number of versions is 500, but your user or your owner could have made it 100 versions. And if you're in a classic one, uh, it, it could be as low as one or 10 versions, uh, but that's up to your owner. So you, you typically would not decide that, it's already done for you. And all you need to see if versioning is turned on is go to the dot, dot, dot. If you see version history here, good chance it's on when you see that then you can see how many versions you have. Okay, and you're always guaranteed that that is the latest version. And you've seen that when I click on this, I get those changes I just did. No questions asked, okay? Also, if I go to share this, so if I say, remember this option here to share this document, you are sharing that version. So there's nothing you need to worry about. And if you do decide to go over here and download it, you are downloading that version. You're not downloading a previous version, okay? So that is why in SharePoint, you know you're always getting the latest and the greatest. So if you sent this to somebody, you don't have to question, am I getting the latest version? It is already there and it's already turned on for you. Now, now is a good time to also bring up this business about sh sh the actual sharing itself. The default behavior of SharePoint is when I click and go into this Word document, I am here, you can see up here, student one, it does allow another person to come in here at the same time. And it will pop up over here, you'll see another icon where you can see how many people are editing this. So yes, by default, you can have multiple people in the same document at the same time. And what it does is called paragraph locking. And what that means is if I'm sitting in this paragraph right here, nobody can play with it unless until I get out of it. Okay, so that's this one right there. And whoever's in this blah, 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 I can't get into that one because they're using it. So it does have paragraph locking. Now an option, if you don't want people to work in this while I'm working, you can go to the dot, 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 you can go to more, and you can say check out over here. If I check it out, like I'm about to do, you can see there's a little red tick there, and it's if I hover, it says this item was created, and then you checked out this item so others cannot edit. So it doesn't mean that the next student can't come in and take a look at it and read it or do a save as, but nobody can change the version I'm on. It's locked for editing. Okay, so if I come in here now and I can work peacefully knowing that no one else will come in here and do any work because I have it checked out. Now remember, it does allow people to go into it. They just can't edit it and overwrite this one. The problem is you gotta make sure you manually check it back in. You can check it in or discard the checkout, which means discard any changes I did. Because if you don't check it in, the next person cannot check it in for you. 
the only person who can check that in would be the site owner or site administrator. So you must come into here and check it in or check it out or discard it. I'm going to choose check in. I can put some comments in, click check in, and it will release it. And now anybody else can use it. Okay. So that's a nice feature if you don't want someone else in there at the same time. But that's a Word document. If you take something, if I go back to this PDF here, I believe it's just a, uh, it's a PDF of a, of a, there you go, a floor plan. Okay, this is just a standard PDF. Well, nobody's editing this. We all can be here at the same time, right? Because that's the whole point of SharePoint. It does allow you to go in. It doesn't lock it because we're not editing. It's Adobe. I can download it from here. I can print it out, uh, copy it. That I can delete it, of course, if you have the rights to delete. But that's because that's a PDF. Okay, so that is how you handle document versioning. You may want to ask, or if you don't want to ask, just click the dot, dot, dot to see if version history is there. If it is, you're good. While we're in this menu, there's one more feature you may like. If there's a document in here that you quite often use, you can click the dot, dot, dot and say pin to top. And it will put it up here. So you don't have to go get it all the time. Maybe I do this PowerPoint presentation, dot, 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 pin to top. Okay, this way here, the most popular ones will stay here on top, so you don't have to go looking all the way through. And of course, you have the options to edit the pin. You can move it right. You can unpin it. So if I want to move it right, it comes on the other side, or I can say, yeah, I don't want it here at all anymore. Same with this one. You click on that little circle edit pin, unpin it. Okay, so you can do that too to make things a little bit easier and quicker to access. All right, that's all we have to say about document versioning. Let's see you in the next topic where we discuss document filtering. Welcome back everybody to this topic where we discuss document filtering. And this is a pretty easy one because most of you have filtered, especially in Excel, where you have those drop down arrows. So here in our document library, the confidential docs, when you have all these fields, you will see that there are arrows here in the corner that you can use to filter. And this is the other way or the alternative way instead of using these views. These views are permanent, like you build the various views. The problem is you're not gonna create a view for every filter option you got. So your views are typically your most popular ones, and then you filter for the rest. So for example, if I quickly want to see all the denied statuses, I can simply come into here, say filter by, and then this pane will pop up and I just choose denied and apply, and boom, I just get the denied version, or the denied uh, files. Now I can unfilter it, by coming back into here, filter by one, and say clear all, apply. Or I can simply exit out, go to a different page and come back in. These filters, unlike Excel, do not stay for the next person. So if maybe I want um, a department uh, by IT, apply it, I get all the IT records, and if I decide to go to documents and come back to confidential, it's back to all. Okay, so it doesn't stay, it doesn't even stay for you. So let alone another person who's looking at this. Okay, now we do have other options. So if you remember this one here, where we had to make this one in particular by department to get that effect. Okay, I'm gonna put it back to all. We have an option here, I can do status, and I can say group by status, and it does the same effect like that. So I've got my statuses. But again, it doesn't keep it, it's not permanent. I go back to documents, back to confidential, it sets it back. So this department one, I could have simply said group by department and there they are. It's exactly the same concept as the other one, except this one is there all the time. Okay, and again, back in here, turn off the group by department and it comes back in. Now the other cool thing, feature we have is if you go into here 
you have an option for totals. Now, depending on the type of the column, this one I can count how many records there are. In this case, it says there's nine. And I can come over to the due date and say totals, maybe tell me the maximum date and the due date, and that is February 16th, 2023. Now the file size actually happens to be numeric, so when I do this one, I can actually sum them up and get a total file size that's basically 1.1 1 .1, uh, megs we're looking at there. Or, yeah, about 1.1 1 .1 meg, not a lot, but you can do that. So that's what the totals are by. And of course, simply, you know, if I go out, come back in, these ones stay, which is kind of nice for other people who come in, they can see everything, or simply just come in here and say none for the file size, none for the date, and none for the status. Okay, so, but, so these, this filtering is the, probably the easiest way. Everybody has access to this one. You do not need special rights. So it doesn't matter what uh, list or library you're in, you just look for the arrows up here in the corner and then choose filter by and then choose your options. That's all you have to do. And if you forget and leave them on, that's okay. Just leave and go out. When you come back in, they'll reset themselves. Okay, that's all we have to say for document filtering. We'll see you in the next topic where we discuss searching. Welcome back everyone to this last topic in this section where we now discuss searching for documents. For the most part this is easy but we're just going to show you a couple different tricks and where you can actually do all the searching and uh, all that kind of stuff. First thing to note, uh, when you upload a document into any library in any site, do not expect it to be searchable for 15 minutes to a couple hours. It all depends on how the index is set from the administration level. So it could be 15 minutes, it could be an hour, because it has to get indexed. So don't upload something and go search and expect it to be there. It may take a few minutes. That being said, we'll start the search from the home page of our site. And you can see up in the search bar here, it says, search this site. So it's very simple, you just click in there. If I want that uh, first document, you can see it's already populating. I just type the word first, I hit enter key, and of course I will get anything with first in the title, in the body, and or the uh, metadata. Now what is metadata? I haven't used that term for you yet. Metadata is these custom columns. So it will search those as well. Okay, so again, I'll come back up to home. Maybe I'll search pending. And we can see we get a couple that were pending. Okay, that's the site level. Okay, if I go into a library or a list, you can see up here it says search this library. So again, if I type in, let's say, invoice, I will get anything with invoice, and there it is. It's just searching that particular library and not the entire site. Okay, so pretty straightforward, nothing too difficult there for searching. But there is one more hidden little gem that a lot of people were not aware of. If you look in the upper right corner of your screen where your login information is, you can see student one in your logo or your image. If you click that, you should see an option here to say, or that says my Microsoft 365 profile. When you click on that, you're taken to Microsoft's Delve and give it a second, it takes a while. This is your profile where you can manage your profile and you can see it actually shows you all the documents you've been using in your SharePoint site. You can also see other employees in that document or in that site and other documents from people around me. And again, a lot of this is based on permissions. So if you don't have the permission to see student three's docs, you won't. But in my particular site, everyone has full rights here. So that's what you're seeing here. You're seeing your documents, your coworkers, and their documents they're accessing. So you can access them through here. 
But what's cool is way in the upper left side of this screen, you see there's a search over here. So if I click on that one, same thing happens. If I type in invoice like that, click that little blue arrow, it will pull in all the invoices. Now what's interesting on this one, because student one actually has access to the parent site, Silverado, it is pulling ones from Silverado Club as well as SharePoint site user. So when we first did that search back here, when we were on this screen, it's, oops, it's only, I'm gonna hit my back button here. On this one, it's only searching the SharePoint site user course site. But when you come in through here, your Delve, it's actually gonna search all sites that you belong to, which and there's a third one down below called Alpha One Media, which is the site collection. So Alpha One Media is first, Silver Auto Club is the su subsite, and the SharePoint site user course is the subsite of that. So that's the advantage of going into your Delve, which is accessible through your little icon over here, and go to Microsoft 365 Profile. You can see all your documents across all platforms that you have access to. And this is the little hidden gem a lot of people weren't there weren't aware that it's there okay that's all we have to say for document handling how to create your document libraries or how to create the documents upload them your views versioning filtering and how to search that wraps up that section we'll see you in the next section where we now talk about lists and their content see you on the other side hello everyone and welcome to this new section what are lists you just finished doing documents, now we have lists. And basically in SharePoint, those are the only two main kinds of objects. You have a, a, the library, which contains all your files, and lists are everything else. And they basically look like a list, or they look like a table, basically from Excel. But we have various kinds of lists, okay? So let's get more into what are they and how you're gonna use them. So first off, again, Lists allow you to store and track information and group similar items, such as contacts, calendar events, maybe announcements. And SharePoint comes with a bunch of these pre-built web parts. There's like about 10 of them or so. They're ready to collect the information. Again, however, you can add custom columns and views, just like you can, or what you just finished doing in document libraries, it's all the same but you also have the ability to create a custom list to hold any type of information. It's up to you. Now, the difference between a major document library and this list is that libraries contain files and the various documents that you collect, Excel, PowerPoint, etc., whereas lists are entered in through a form uh, provided by SharePoint and they're stored in the SharePoint database. Now you can, by default, attach documents to a list item. Not always, but you can, but it's not the same <clears throat> as an actual uh, document that's stored in a library, okay? It, a lot of this will depend on how your site owner or site administrator has set up these lists and what you can do. But basically, as soon as you see, click the new button and you see a form of some kind pop up, you know you're in a list versus a document library you're loading up a file okay so another point about these is that both modern and classic experience have uh, both of these web parts now except with the difference a classic being the menu options are through the ribbon whereas modern it's through you know the menu bar you also have the ability to go through the settings gear in the corner to see your site contents to access the lists as well as what's on the quick launch again it all depends on how your site owner has created it. Now let's take a look at some of the lists that we have access to. And you can see there's quite a bit here. We have links uh, and promoted links. The main difference between the two is links is text-based where promoted links is picture-based, but they both can link to external sites, internal sites, internal documents, document libraries, anything that has a URL, you can link to it. 
announcements. That's a very popular one. You often see on the main pages of a lot of sites, that's where your site owner or yourself will be announcing different things that are going on in the organization. And again, you can have attachments in there or whatnot. Contacts, you can have a contact list for your people. And this, however, is separate from your contacts list in Outlook. So you should not be putting employees in this one. This will be external people only. You also have a calendar, which we are going to be doing here and today. Uh, in this calendar, this is separate from your Outlook one in that you cannot invite people to this. This is meant just to show events that's going on in the organization. We will show you how to connect it to your Outlook, but it, it traditionally sits in SharePoint. You also have a discussion board. If you want to have chats or maybe uh, Q and A's for and, and get the employees interacting with each other, you also have issue tracking. So if you're a smaller organization, you have the ability to have a support ticket system where people can come to SharePoint and enter in problems and it'll assign it to somebody to get something done. Now this is intended for a smaller organization. If you're a larger one, like thousands of employees, I highly expect you have your own support ticket system but SharePoint does come with one and we actually do one today. And lastly, you have a survey. So you can potentially have a survey where you can do a survey for a course or whatnot. Uh, this is almost like Survey Monkey if you have that, but this is for internal only. Uh, it's built internally. You can export it to Excel and stuff, stuff like that. Okay. But at the end of the day, this list here, they're all lists. They all look like a fancy table in the back end. It's how they look in the front, but they're all form based. You click on a button, you fill out a form. All right. So that's all we have to say for those lists. Let's get working. We'll see you in the next topic where we actually start with announcements. See you on the other side. Welcome back everybody to this topic. Where we talk about creating calendar events. Next to documents, this is another popular one because if you do have a calendar for your organization, this will be often looked at and creating these are important and creating views. Uh, but one thing to note with these calendars, these calendars in uh, SharePoint are not meant to invite anybody. Okay, you can't. So they're just meant to show you the event or show you the meetings or whatever, but nobody can be invited from these. So that is the key difference between this and any other calendar you're used to. So again, I already have a calendar on the left. I call it the event calendar, but to create it, same thing, go up to your gear, add an app if it's not already done for you. Um, but in the calendar, when you click on it, it's going to be classic. This is a classic calendar. Uh, that option going through the gear, add an app calendar is the classic one. And that's the most popular one to use right now. And you can tell it's classic because you can tell your quick launch is a little bit tighter. And you have tabs up here, whereas in a modern view, you used to have a buttons across the top. Okay, so that is your clue. We're in a classic, but it still has the same features as any other modern object. Okay, and is also just like Excel, or sorry, like Outlook. So you can see here, I can go to you know January 2023, and let's say I want uh, an event on January 11th. Well, just like Outlook, you simply double click it and up will come a form for you to fill out. And you can see I don't have an option to invite anybody. So maybe this is a, a SharePoint user class, site user. And I can say it's a maybe a day long. So I say make this an all day event. And description categories. But what I added to this is I already created two custom fields down here called food and instruction type one with a default one without and both mandatory so you can see the food well you can bring your own i guess but the instruction type well maybe it's a video course hence why you bring your own okay so i just put a title in i could put a location uh you know your office whatever and click save and now there's a sharepoint site user class well, maybe I'm going to do another one, the SharePoint site owner class, which is a two day class the following week. So that one I can double click 
I'll say SharePoint site owner. And this one is going to be um, corporate boardroom because it's going to be instructor led and we're going to offer pizza. Okay. And again, it's going to be an all day event over two days, 18th and 19th. I'll put the 19th on there and save it. So there's my SharePoint site owner. And we'll do one more, maybe on the 26th. I'll say this is a SharePoint site admin class, location, your office, because it's going to be an all day event over two days, but it's going to be virtual. But we'll still provide you pizza because we'll come by to your office and give you some pizza. Okay, so click on save and that's done. So you see, you just keep clicking in here, uh, adding your events. Again, they, this was all day events. They could be for hourly events, meetings, whatever. So that, up to that point, it is the same that you're used to. Now, again, just imagine this gets fuller and fuller. You're going to have to create views because on this one, there is no filters as, you're, as you know them. You can't click on any button here to drop down and filter. So how do you create a view? It's the same as before with one exception. So when you, here you have to go come up to the calendar tab and you can see right there, create view. Okay, so you click on create view and then this is the difference. It, you have to choose this calendar view because it's not a standard. So always choose calendar view here for this and then it will look the same. Okay, or almost the same. So the view name would be, uh, maybe we want to know ones with pizza. So you put a view pizza, and again, down below, you have a filter where food is equal to pizza. Because maybe we only want to go to courses that have pizza. Click OK. And there we go. Oh, did I... Let's do that again. I think I have to fix that. So I think, so, so you see we're not, oh, it's in December. That's why. There we go. I have to go over to January and there we go. Those are the two pizza classes. Now I'm going to do another one, another create view. And I'm going to say calendar view. But uh, I call it instructor, le uh, instructor led. Maybe I only want those courses. So the filter is where instruction type is equal to instructor led. Click OK. I go to January and voila. So you can see if I sit here and switch my view to all events. Oops, not all events. Oops, I don't know. Cancel that. Uh, it was current events or calendar, sorry, default calendar. Okay, so there's my January schedule. And as soon as I come in here and say, well, I want instructor led courses, you can see how it only gives me the one. Okay, so that is kind of the major difference there in how to create the views. You will have to use these if you have a lot of events, they're useful. Uh, other than that, this is basically the same concept. You have alert me's. You can email a link to, uh, from here if you need be to other people. And then the actual event itself. So if you want to make a change, click on the event, go into it, and then choose edit over here to make your change. And of course, that's how users actually click on it to see the details of what the event is about. They click on it and they can see everything they want and they also have an alert me for that specific event because that's another way you can get a notified people of a change in, in said event. Okay, so that's all we have to say about calendar events. We'll see you in the next topic where we discuss links. Welcome back everybody to this topic where we now show you how to create announcements. If you are in charge of handling your announcements for your corporation, it's not too difficult. Uh, a lot of the knowledge you've learned from your document library does come over here. 
So I already have a corporate announcements app ready on the left side. If not, you have to build one through the gear uh, add an app feature. Uh, but again, this would be done by your uh, site owner. So if you have a corporate announcement, or it's basically called an announcements app, I just call it corporate announcements. So you see you come in here and it kind of looks like a uh, library, except it doesn't hold files uh, like you're used to. It's, it's called items in here. But if you look again carefully, it does have some of the same characteristics. It has edit and grid view. You can share it, you can export it. It's got a dot, dot, dot. You got some alerts on there and you got some views and information. So a lot of it is the same. So again, I went ahead and I made some custom columns. So we have an announcement type and an audience on here. And the we'll start off with the basic announcement first. So if I go up to the new button here, just like anything else, you can see a form opens up. And basically, what do I have to announce? Well, maybe this is a, uh, a birthday party and uh, a body. Well, if I click on that little pencil over here, I can say our awesome instructor, Robin, has a birthday next week. So we have a party planned for tomorrow, something like that. Okay, I click save and I can put an expiry date on. Now it doesn't really uh, do anything unless you have a filter or a view that disables that, but you can put an expiry date on this if you wish. You can pick any one you want. Now announcement type, it's a corporate notice. Uh, audience, it is gonna be corporate wide. Okay, and of course I have attachments there if I want. Click save and there's my first announcement. Now, just like anything else, you have a dot, dot, dot there. I can open it, edit it. I can share it. So just like we did sharing in the document library, same concept. You can delete it. Um, one thing we did, actually didn't talk to over in the document library, but it's the same over here, is this alert me. Uh, if you see those alert me's, you can click on them. And basically you have options to be notified when that item or the document gets changed uh, and sent to you immediately, daily or weekly. So this is a nice feature, but be careful because you could be getting a lot of alerts. Okay, the second type I want to do is I want to do another announcement, but maybe I want to have a picture embedded in it. But before you can do that, you need to know the URL to that photo. So that's why we actually have a photo library over here called stock photos and it's a little different than your document library uh, in that these automatically have thumbnails whereas your documents will not show these pictures in a thumbnail so that's why you don't typically put pictures in documents i think i actually might have one in here mm, no i guess i don't i thought i threw one in but i don't okay so you typically have a photo library for this so what i'm going to do so I'm going to take this little files system I got here. I click on the files once and I need to get the original because if you look at the URL up there, that's a messy URL. We need a more direct one. So if you click on the dot 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 view original, there's the actual URL to those photos. I'll copy that. I'll come back to this tab, hit my back button once, go back into my corporate announcements. Now, if I want to make an announcement, I click new and maybe I'll say, um, get your papers ready. When I click on the body, click on a pencil and say, get ready for your conference. Now, to do an image in here, I use the dot, dot, dot over here and say insert image and I paste the URL there. That is where we need that URL to go. When I hit save, I now get that. Some space in there and I click save. And again, I can put announcement type, maybe it's uh, corporate notice, but it's for the sales team. 
And this time if I want to put attachment on, I'll click add attachments. Maybe I'll go get that one I downloaded earlier. This is the Windsor floor plan and I click save. Voila. So now I have two announcements. Just like a document library, I can come over here and I can create, guess what, a new view. And maybe it's going to be the sales team. Click on create. Come back up in here, choose edit current view. And scroll down, filter where the audience equals sales team. And I click OK. Voila. So again, I'll come out, go into corporate announcements. There's my two announcements. Now pretend you got, you know, 50 of these. I can come up here and choose sales team. Done. Or I can use the, guess what, the filters. Group by sales team and apply. Remember, the filter will not stay if I go out and come back in. Okay, so that is how you treat the announcement app. Pretty much identical. Uh, one last thing, if we go back into the Get the Papers Ready. Okay, there's my attachment. And unfortunately, we have to... There it is. I click on the pencil. There's my little uh, folders. I can click on See More here as well to see, because it actually collapses them. It won't show you the picture by default, so click on See More there and see less. Okay, so that is how you handle announcements. And that wraps up that topic. We'll see you in the next one where we talk about calendar events. Hey everyone, welcome back to this topic where we now discuss creating links. It sounds easy and it is, but I just want to show you a couple of different options when using links. And again, they are to be created from the gear up here at an app and it's called links. I, however, called mine on the left side hot links. Uh, and I've also added in some options here, uh, some custom fields, location and link type. Um, okay, so they're pretty straightforward. Uh, you, you just need to know the URL. So some of them you'll, you're gonna know off the top of the head, some you have to go get, and I'll show you where to get some when it comes to the internal stuff. But let's start off with a basic one. So go into your link app and again, like everything else, go up to new and it's an item and it should appear on the right side. So we need an HTTP in front and then your web address. So let's take a simple one, something like YouTube whoops, youtube.com. And the alternative text is if you don't use the alternative text, it will actually show the person the www. This way here, if you put this in, they won't see it. And if you can put notes in here you, if you want. So um, uh, look at cute puppy videos, something like that. Now, the two extra fields I threw in here was location. So it's external link type. It is just, uh, I guess, a blog, it's a video blog. Click save and there it is. So you can see there's my YouTube, there's my little notes about it, location and type. So if I click on it, it will open up in a new tab and there's my uh, YouTube channel. Okay. Now, if I want to go uh, to another site, uh, for example, I have a site up here for support. So I'm going to open up another ribbon, or another tab, sorry, and I'm going to go to my, this one here. So this is uh, uh, basically some support on how to find uh, the ID of a SharePoint document. So if there's uh, um, a URL, I take it from up here, copy it, come back to my hot links, new item, paste the URL in there, and we'll call it SharePoint support notes how to find SharePoint item document ID. Location, again, it's the external link type, it's a support. 
Okay, and that's an external one. So I just went to a particular website, got a particular link story, click save, and there it is. Okay, so fairly easy. You just need to either type the address in because you know it or go get it off the internet and put it in there. Okay, well, how about internal ones? Well, if you are going to link directly to a library from here, like Confidential Docs, we need to know that URL. So there's a couple ways to get that actually. If you go to Confidential Docs on the left, you can see the address up here is Silver Auto SharePoint Site User. And there's your clue here. That's the name of the library. So I can just take that URL right there, copy it, come back over to my hot links, new item, paste it. And again, this is confidential docs. Helps to spell there, notes, link directly, whoops, directly to corporate confidential docs folder. Okay, location, this one's internal, link type, uh, maybe it's a uh, well, support. Okay, click save. And when I click on that one this time, I'm taken directly into the confidential docs. Now, what about a file? Well, the file is the same thing. I can click on a file here, the dot, 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 and copy link. So if I choose copy link, and again, I can leave it, I can change the properties if I want, click copy, copy again. Then I go back and close that out, go back to my hot links, new item, paste it in, alternate text, Windsor, Windsor, House floor plan. Notes. Click to view floor plan. Location, internal, link type. Uh, well, I guess it's, well, we don't have enough proper types. I'll just say news. Click on save. And there it is. And when they click on it, it opens up directly into that document. Okay. So there you have it. That's how you create your links. You have many, many options here. And just like everything else, it is a list if I want to create views. Because remember, you could have a ton of these if you want. And it's all to help people uh, for various reasons. Uh, maybe this is your support link system. Again, if I come up to the all links over here, create a new view, and we're gonna call it support. Click Create, back up here, choose Edit Current View, and I switch the filter down here to say, and it was the, um, what did we call it? I called it uh, Link Type, I think it was. No, not the Link Type. I forgot what we called it already. Yeah, it was link type. I apologize. The link type is equal to support. Click OK. There it is. So again, if I'm outside of it, I come back into hot links. It shows all links until I come over here and choose support and I get just the support links. And likewise, if I come back into hot links, I can use the drop down and just filter by as well if I don't want to create my various views. All right, that's how we handle links. We'll see you in the next topic where we talk about custom lists. Welcome back everybody to this topic where we now discuss uh, custom lists. These are not uh, used a lot. It depends on your type of work, but when they are used, they are great. Essentially, what these are, are custom tables, just like you would have in Excel. So again, how to create the app, which should be done for you, is through the gear, add an app, and they are called custom list, exactly like you, I said.
However, you can name them whatever you want. And on the left side of my screen, I called mine working from home. So when I click on that link, again, it's starting to look a lot like everything else, like your uh, hot links, uh, like your corporate announcements, but they are uh, different entities. Now in this one, what I want to do here, what the intent was, is that if you want to work from home, you need to put your name in here, shift desired, and your supervisor, and you want to bank your hours. It's just a list uh, that we are going to have for our employees. And again, these are custom columns that were created with various drop downs or yes, no features. And all the user does, uh, like yourself, is if you want to work from home, you click the new button. And what's your name? So here we go, my name. Shift desired, I'll take the 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. Supervisor is Betty Boop. And yes, I'll bank my hours. No need for attachments. Click save, and there it is. And then if I have a new another employee comes in here, uh, this one's going to be uh, uh, Daffy Duck. Shift desired, maybe they want the afternoon shift. And their supervisor is Donald Duck and they don't want to bank the hours, click on save. And you see, I just do another one. Maybe this is Mickey Mouse. Shift desired, they'll take the late shift. Supervisor is Lucy Lou, and they'll bank their hours. Okay, it's just a simple little list that you add. It can be created, it's all customized. And guess what? It all follows the same uh, options that we've been teaching you. You have edit and grid view. You can share this list. You can email it. You can export it. Um, you can alert me. You can add more columns. You can create views and customize them. You can select a particular item in that list and you know, e copy the link directly to that list item. Delete it if you have the rights. Okay, it's all the same. It's just how do you want these lists that we're talking about to be used? Is it a calendar? Is it uh, links? Is it announcements? Okay, but they're all essentially a table of some kind. Okay, so that's how you do a custom list. We'll see you in the next one where we talk about issue tracking. Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to this last topic in this section about issue tracking. Uh, if you are a larger organization, you will probably not have this tool because you will have your own support ticket system uh, for your IT department. But if you're a smaller organization, let's say a couple hundred or less, or you know, three or four or five hundred, you may like this feature. There is a support ticket system that comes with SharePoint. It's an inner gear called a support uh, or called issue tracking actually. Uh, I already have it over here on the left side called support tickets. Okay, so it comes with the, it's, it's, it's another type of list, but the cool thing is, is that it will email uh, the person that uh, needs to be emailed. Now that email could take a few extra minutes because it actually has to go through SharePoint and through the exchange server, but it, it does work quite nicely. So you can see on my support tickets here on the left, uh, again, it comes with the some of its own custom columns. I've added a couple in, and it is, again, like the same. It's got like everything else. It has an edit and grid view. Uh, it's got alert me's, it's got your views, but let's just show you how to get them created. So again, I'll click on the new button you can see I do have a lot more options in this one uh, to fill out. So title, um, monitor, uh, quit working, uh, assign it to. So I'll assign it. You have to know who to assign it to. So in this case, I'll assign it to student one. Issue status, it's active. Priority, high. Uh, description, monitor, just quit. Uh, I re uh, I unplugged and same issue. Okay, category is hard. This is the one I adjusted to say hardware. Is there any related issues? So if there, if there was other tickets, comments, uh, supervisor is Betty Boop, and anything else? Due date? Well, 
it's the holidays, so I don't really need it done until next year. Okay, click on save, and there's the ticket. Okay, so you can see it issues a, a number automatically, and I'll check my email in a few minutes. I'll do another one, no. So I'll say new again. Uh, I'll say keyboard, quit working. Assign it to the same support guy. Student one, issue status, again, it's active. Priority, um, well, the keyboard is not working, so it's high. Description, just quit. Okay, category, uh, hardware, but this time I'll say related issues, and I'll choose the monitor quit working. Maybe it's related to that one. And put, again, a due date in if I want. Next next year. Oh, that sounds like my email came in. Supervisor Betty Boop. And save it. So again, so there's my ticketing system. So if I go to my student account, there's the email that came in. And when I click on it, I get all the details. It tells me the monitor quit working from it was signed to me and tells me who it was from up here. Uh, student one, uh, Betty Boop. Um, all this information comes in. So now I can, you know, do what I need to do. Of course, if I wanted better information or more details, I would uh, make sure I do custom columns that, uh, that, you know, account for that information. But this way here, this little sport ticket system is built into SharePoint. And, you know, you, when you're finished as, you know, student one, I can come into this one. And then I can switch the status to closed. Oh, and there's the other one came in. So I can see there's my other support ticket, the keyboard quit working, right? Um, but then I can actually start doing active issues. You can see this, uh, this view automatically comes with it. I can do active issues, voila. Or I can create a new, uh, where's my create a new view? And I'll call it by status. Okay, create it. And this one, when I go to edit this one, I guess which one I'm going to use. I'm going to use this group by, and we'll group it by. Well, it's the status. Do we not have the status? Issue status right there. Click OK. See, now I can see which ones are closed and which ones are active. Okay, it, it behaves just like any other list that we've been used to or what we've trained you on but it has the ability to email to the student or to your support person. So we use it for support, but you can use it for anything uh, as a way to email people through SharePoint and maybe a task list or something if you want, that works as well. But it's all about creating these custom columns as well, which your site owner would do, and then just using the product. All right, that's all we have to say for issue tracking. And that wraps up that section. We'll see you in the next section where we interact with Office 365 products. See you on the other side. Hey, welcome back everybody to this section where we interact with Office 365 products and more specifically the SharePoint calendar to Outlook. Now we've already done the Word one where, where you're in Word or Excel, you can do a file save as and connect to our uh, SharePoint. Well, we can go in reverse. So if you remember, we did a, a, a calendar here on my left menu, the event calendar. <clears throat> and if you remember, we already showed you how to create your events. And we also did your uh, views and custom columns. And if you look to the right, you'll see there's an option here to connect to Outlook. So with that button there, if you simply just click on it, it will give you a little warning. So you want me to open Outlook? I say yes, open Outlook. And then I'm gonna get another warning, which I gotta bring into my view here, this one here. It says, connect this SharePoint calendar to Outlook. Yes, I do. So I click on yes. Give me a minute. It's pulling it into my Outlook. And I will pull it in here, there it is. So it opens it as a shared calendar. And of course, if I go to next year, 
voila, there's those same uh, meetings and trainings that are there. So as a user, you don't have to go back into that screen back over here in SharePoint to see what's going on. You can now just open it as a shared calendar and see what's going on without having going over there. Now, likewise, if you are the maintainer or if you need to create your events, you can create them over here. Now, they do take a while again because it has to go through the Exchange server and back into SharePoint. But if I wanted to create something on the 23rd of January, I double click. Here it is. Title, uh, say SharePoint um, review, core, uh, review. Maybe it's not an all day event, but it's a time. Now, again, as you can see, uh, I can't invite anybody. I also do not have access to those um, those um, custom columns where it was we'd bring food and all that kind of stuff. I can, however, turn on this button here for Teams meeting, and it will put the Teams meeting in, which will send this required. So I'll say student one. Um, I can do that in order to get this uh, required and it will actually invite this person. But if I click on uh, send there, uh, it's not in my primary calendar, that's fine. Say yes. So there's my meeting at 8 a.m. on January 23rd in regards to the SharePoint review. Now it's going to take a while. I don't know if I'll have time to see it pop up because I have seen this take a fair amount of minutes before, as much as 10 minutes, because it's working in reverse. Let's just give this a try. <clears throat> yeah, it's not there as of yet, uh, but that's okay. It will come in eventually, okay? So that's an option. You can either, again, connect to Outlook through here, so you can actually just observe what's going on in your Outlook, and you don't have to go into SharePoint, or if you're the maintainer, you can maintain it over here. Okay, so that's how you connect your SharePoint calendar to your Outlook. That's all we have to say for that topic. We'll see you in the next one where we connect everything to Teams. Welcome back everybody to this last topic we, where we discuss connecting Teams to SharePoint. And this actually kind of comes full circle because a lot of uh, organizations are using Teams quite a bit now. And what they're not aware of is how much you can connect to Teams and therefore you don't have to leave Teams. So please open up your Teams and uh, I'll open up mine here. And you can see I already have a uh, team called Power Automate. It's one of my courses I teach. And then I have a bunch of channels, so general channels, so forth. And as you know, you can have different accesses. Uh, it depends on who owns the team, and they would give you various access to the various channels. But it doesn't matter what channel you're in. We're going to show you how to connect this channel over to uh, SharePoint so we don't have to leave it. Okay, so, and again, like most of them, you're going to need to know the URL to where we need to go. So let's start with that calendar since we just finished with it. So if you go back to your SharePoint site and go into this calendar of ours, we need this URL up here. So again, just copy that entire URL, come back to your SharePoint, or sorry, your Teams, and in your Teams channel, again, doesn't matter which one, you'll see there's a plus sign up here in the middle of your top middle where you can click on that and you can add other components. And these are the components you can add to your Teams channel. And as you can see, there is a ton of components you can add. What we want is the ones towards the top. We want something called website. So it may not be on the top line like mine, it might be a couple down, but you're looking for a website. You click on website and it says, okay, well, what we're we gonna call this tab well, we'll call it the site user calendar. And all you do is just paint or paint, paste the URL in there. And you can see we have an option here. It will post it to the channel. So any, anybody who's in the channel will be notified that there's now a calendar. You just click on save, give it a minute, and there's my calendar. So you can see there's my posts. And you can see it says that I added this tab as a user, I can come up here 
and I can see, guess what, my events. And because you are technically in SharePoint, you can go and create a view, look at your views, create a meeting, whatever. Um, you know, if I go for the 25th, again, we'll just do another SharePoint review. That's all I'm going to put in there. Uh, instructor led, save it. And if I go back to my calendar, there it is. So it's connected immediately. Okay, because you're just pointing to it. So it's the same, it's the same one. You just you're accessing it without having to leave your Teams channel. You just click on the various tabs up here to go where you need to do go. So it's quite handy. But you can also link to a document library. So instead of having people go all the way over there, if you're looking for a you know certain project or whatnot, you click on this plus sign again. But this time you choose, where is it? Can't see, there it is, document library. So you choose document library, give it a minute, and again, it will recognize the sites that you're on. So I can, this is the one that we're currently on, the site user course, I can click on that, and it says next. Then it says, okay, I can see two document libraries there, which one do you want? I'll take the confidential docs and click next. <clears throat> And I'll call this Confidential Docs. I can call it the same name. And again, it'll post it to the channel. I click Save, give it a minute, and now I have access to all those documents. And again, you can click on them right here to open them up. You can do a new one. You can upload more, copy a link. The dot, dot, dot is way over here on the right. So you can see you have a couple of options in here. But if you uh, notice you're missing some options, so if you want to get the full options on these, you have to open in SharePoint to get the versioning and all that other kind of stuff. The sharing, uh, you can copy the link, but there's no share button in here. Okay, I'll do another one, copy, or another one where I do a document library, but I want to show you where I can go up to, where is it, Silver Auto Club, which is a different site altogether. It's the site above this one. And go into that one and I think I have a project there so there's my project folder and save it and I'll call it project a docs click save give it a minute <clears throat> and there it is again see so one team's channel can be linked to multiple objects back in SharePoint and again if I'm working on a project you can see then we don't have to have people go back into SharePoint. They can access it all from here. And again, they do have to have the correct permissions and rights and so forth, which is not your responsibility. That's the responsibility of the owner. But if I come back to my posts, you can see it keeps posting in here. So it tells everybody that I have all this content in there. Okay, you can have anything. Let's um, do another one see what else we have. So that was your website. You can have a document library. How about a PDF? So if I go back to my SharePoint, remember underneath, I think it's confidential docs, I have this floor plan again. Well, if I click on this floor plan, and again, I can do the, there's no option to uh, get the original document. So I can just copy this link right there, copy it come back to my teams, go back to the plus sign, and I just say website. And I'll say floor plan, or it's the Windsor floor plan, and paste it in, save it, give it a minute, and voila, I now have the floor plan. So you can link to calendars, document libraries, Project A docs, a floor plan, a PDF. In this case, you can link to anything. And if I want to link to a site, same thing, plus sign, website. This time I'll say YouTube and just put the address in, just like that. Oh, it needs the S in front of that. There we go. Okay, give it a second. And now there's my YouTube. Okay, so a little plus sign 
is can do so much a lot of people didn't know it was there and you can link just about anything and everything so your users your team doesn't have to go back and find any of this stuff it's all right here and again it's all based on permissions okay so it doesn't matter <clears throat> you don't have to worry about that as long as it's set up properly by your owner back in your SharePoint site over here it will then automatically control and make sure the right people don't get access to the wrong information all right that's all we have to say about connecting your teams to SharePoint we'll see you in the next topic